The next amino acid metabolism family I want to consider is that of the serine family. So the serine family, as the other families uh, uh, are described, uses serine as a central amino acid for branching out to make the other amino acids. So to understand this family, I need to first describe how serine is synthesized. There are two main pathways that lead to serine in our cells. The first one starts from 3-phosphoglycerate. Now this molecule, if you recall, is found in the glycolysis pathway, so we see a linkage between glycolysis and this amino acid metabolism. The reaction is, starts with an oxidation of the 3-phosphoglycerate, as we can see here. In this reaction, 3-phosphohydroxypyruvate is produced as a result of that oxidation. The uh, transamination of 3-phosphohydroxypyruvate leads to orthophosphoserine, or O-phosphoserine, as we can see here. And the uh, removal of phosphate from O-phosphoserine re results in the production of the amino acid serine. It's a very simple uh, set of steps that make that. A second way of making serine uh, starts with glycine. And this is a set of reactions that I've described in other lectures here relating to folate metabolism. This is a very important reaction, not only for making serine, but also in the reverse direction for making glycine, as well as interchanging the formation of different folates, as we will see. So here's the reaction that occurs. We start in this case with glycine, and we start with this rather complicated folate name, N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate, mouthful. This reaction, a uh, CH2OH group from the methylene tetrahydrofolate, is transferred onto glycine to make serine. The product of that transfer is tetrahydrofolate. So remember from folate metabolism that this is a way of interchanging the different folates. The reaction, as I said, can go in the reverse direction, and in the reverse direction, serine is used as a precursor to make glycine. The CH2OH group that is added to serine is shown in the green box. The next amino acid whose metabolism we want to consider in the serine family is that of cysteine. Cysteine, we remember, is one of two amino acids that contains a sulfur. So getting this sulfur into this serine backbone is uh, a central part of making cysteine. Now cysteine can be made in multiple ways. And when we see amino acids made in multiple ways, it suggests, first of all, an interconnection with a lot of other metabolic processes, but it also illustrates the importance of that amino acid. Cysteine is a very important amino acid for making proteins. The primary means of making uh, cysteine is tied to the metabolism of methionine, so I'll start with that process. If we look at methionine, methionine, of course, is the other amino acid that contains uh, a sulfur. But meth methionine in this process is actually donating um, a methyl group, as we can see. Methionine is used uh, to make S-adenosylmethionine in a rather complicated reaction that's shown here. The adenyl part of ATP combines with methionine to make S-adenosylmethionine, or otherwise known as SAM. The enzyme catalyzing this reaction is methionine adenosyl transferase, as you can see here. In the second step of the process, S-adenosylmethionine is converted to S-adenosyl homocysteine, or SAH. Now, this reaction involves the donation of a methyl group to something else. Right? It's not going to make cysteine, but it's making an intermediate that will be used to make cysteine. That intermediate is S-adenosyl homocysteine. The enzyme catalyzing this reaction is transmethylase. In the next step, hydrolyzing S-adenosyl homocysteine to release the adenosine creates the molecule homocysteine, and I've drawn its structure on the right. The enzyme catalyzing this is S-adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase. Now, homocysteine is an important molecule to understand because it has numerous health consequences. High blood levels of, of homocysteine is related to cardiovascular disease and stroke risk. And so one of the things physicians will do when they're assessing your health is actually measure the level of this uh, molecule because high levels of this molecule are not good. In the next step, homocysteine combines with serine to make cystothionine. Now I've drawn the structure of this molecule on the lower right, and we'll see in just a second how cysteine is made from that. The enzyme catalyzing this reaction is cystothionine beta synthase. Now, deficiency of this enzyme leads to homocysteineuria. And we've seen that homocysteine is not a good molecule to have, so a deficiency of this enzyme has some pretty severe consequences uh, for a person's health. In the last reaction, cystothionine is converted into cysteine. Now, this reaction 
involves a splitting out of beta-ketobutyrate, and the splitting out of that results in the production of cysteine. Now, this is slightly complicated, uh, and so I'll show you that in just a second. Water is required for this process, and the process not only is the splitting occurring that produces cysteine, but the other half of the molecule is losing an ammonium group to become the beta-ketobutyrate. The enzyme catalyzing this reaction is cystothionase, and we can see what has really happened in this process. So I've started here to show you the starting molecules that make cystothionine. I've labeled, first of all, the uh, serine and the homocysteine. Now, these two combine together to make that cystothionine. What happens in producing cysteine is simply we shift where we cut. You can see that in this case that the boxes of the green and the red are shown on the right side of the sulfur. To cleave out and make cysteine involves simply shifting the box. So the cleavage happens as shown here, and that's what produces cysteine, as shown in the green. And beta-ketobutyrate is produced in the molecule on the right after water cleaves off the ammonium ion.